Emergency rush. A drum of number two compressors. Pint of typo, whole blood. Oxygen. Check. Who's on it? Dr. Cole. Good man. I'll bring the oxygen. Hurry, hurry. Tough case? Must be. They hardly ever use this extra equipment. Never mind that. The operation's over. Tell Dr. Fraser what happened. The woman's husband is with him. They're close friends. I'd rather have him break the news. All right, Doctor. Doctor, may I speak to you? the baby. Paul did everything he could, but Paul is going to be all right, though. May I see you now? We're keeping her under sedation. There are complications. Complications? Paula just wasn't meant to have children, John. Oh. You know how hard she's tried, Cliff. After the first one was stillborn, Paula was so careful about taking care of herself this time. The shots, diet. The chances were never good. How could I tell her? Bad news is my department. I'll have a talk with her in the morning. Thanks, Cliff. I think you should know that what's happened is going to cause some change in her. How? Well, she's going to react. She's going to be tense, depressed. Probably a little neurotic. Neurotic? Not Paula. Well, we'll see. I mean, the last time this thing happened, she snapped out of it right away. It's because she had another chance. Something to look forward to. This time it's final. No more chances. You've been a good husband, John. Now you're going to have to be twice as good. More gentle and patient than ever before. I understand. I can see you tomorrow, can't I? Now, now, Mrs. Rogers. And Dr. Fraser told me you were awake. Is there anything I can get for you? Dr. Fraser said he was coming to see me, but I can't remember what time he said. He'll he'll be here around noon. Oh, oh I see. It's almost that now. It is. and the comas, you find it in that bed. There's some powder and lipstick, too. Would you hand right. it to pretty good at this. No, no, come on, sit up like a good girl. That's it. Here. Oh. Oh. 
You look like a little girl. Oh, <laughs> it's the big deal. Sit down. Nurse did a pretty good job, don't you think? Huh? You're cute. <laughs> <laughs> You're wonderful. I expected to find you exhausted and worn out. Oh, you'd be surprised what 12 hours sleep can do for a girl. Paula, mm -hmm. are you really all right? Oh, yes, darling. I'm fine, just fine. Good. <laughs> I, um, I have something for you. Oh, a surprise. Well, it isn't exactly a surprise, but I knew you were crazy about it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, John. Oh, it's just beautiful. It's even more beautiful than I remembered. How long have you had it? I bought it the next day. Oh, you. You're a wonderful surprise keeper. I never even suspected. Paula, hmm? did the doctor, I mean, did Cliff tell oh, yes, you? Yes, dear. Yes, he told me. Oh, don't look so stricken. It's just the way things go. Isn't it? The important thing is that you're all right. I want you to stay all right. So I'm getting out of here and let you get some rest. All right. Goodbye, sweetie. Goodbye. I just love my present, John. I knew you would. I know my girl. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Yeah. Same thing as I told you before, Doctor. Hi, darling. It's not darling, it's just your doctor. Oh, I'm sorry, Cliff. But John's due any minute now. And you were all set to put on your act again. What act? Well, you can fool your husband because he loves you and he wants to believe you're happy. He wants to believe that this hasn't been too tough for you. But you're not fooling me for a minute. I know that every time John's come here, you put on your makeup and a big bright smile. Told them amusing stories about the nurses and the other patients. Told them what's happened, doesn't really matter. <laughs> Is there anything wrong with that? And every night you've been here, you've cried yourself to sleep. But you haven't told him that, have you? No. And you're not going to, are you, Cliff? Certainly not. Paula, the world has not collapsed because you've lost your child. It's happened to a thousand other women who've survived, and so will you. I suppose so, but... In the meantime, I'm just scared stiff. Why, Paula? Why are you scared? Well, I... Cliff, I don't want to be his housekeeper. I want to be his wife, his real wife, the mother of his children. He's always wanted a family, you know that. And now you tell me that I can't give him one. He wants you, Paula. And I want him. I don't want to lose him. Keep on repressing these feelings, and you'll make yourself a very sick woman, and then you'll really lose John. What do you mean? It's good to release your emotions. Cry, let go, but do it in his arms. He loves you. He's your husband. Oh, I haven't done very well by him, have I? Uh, what time is it? He's not going to be late. Uh. Cora's been working day and night, giving the house a thorough cleaning. Did you tell her not to touch the books? Yes. She always gets them all mixed up, you know. I know. <laughs> She must be disappointed. Who? Cora. She'd made such elaborate plans for taking care of the baby. Look, why don't we adopt one? The world's full of nice kids who need parents. Butterfield. You know, Butterfield, red-headed fellow in the drama department. Same situation. They've adopted two. And Paula, they're the most wonderful kids I've ever seen. Darling, they... please, let's talk about it some other time, shall we? Oh, 
that you look well. Oh, why shouldn't I? All you do in the hospital is eat and sleep and get your back rubbed. Oh, Cora, the place looks wonderful. What have you done to it? It's fit and polish. That's well, all. Well, it never looked like this before, I assure you. Come on. <laughs> Up you go. Oh. <laughs> Still dusty behind the books. Mr. Rogers wouldn't let me touch them. Well, don't worry. You and I will get together and do them together someday, okay? <laughs> Down, dear. I can walk from here. Get my bag for me, will now, you? I'll put you to bed. Uh, no, first. I'm all right, really. I am. Get it now, huh? I think you need to bother coming back next week, Mrs. Rogers. Good. You're in good condition. <laughs> Thanks to you, Doctor. We'll just make a routine checkup three months from now. All right, I'll see you then. Bye, Miss Barry. Goodbye. Oh, hello. How are well, you? Well, I'm fine, thanks. Oh, she's beautiful. And how she's grown. Mm -hmm. She's got six teeth. Oh, isn't that one? <laughs> Doctor's ready. I'll take it. All right. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> If you're busy, I'll hold the baby. Hello. Well, well, what's the matter? Yeah, that's a good little girl. Yes. Well, let's sit down here. Hello. What's the matter, darling? Baron, will you take the baby? I just remembered I have another appointment. Yes. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Rogers. Look, John, as far as Tom and I are concerned, you're right for the job. This is no sudden notion, John. We've been discussing it for some time. I'm definitely going to retire this year, and President Russell and I both agree that you're the man to take my place. <laughs> Dean. Yeah, she'll make a good dean, John. The students like you and the faculty respect you. Now, how about it? If we can sell the idea to the trustees and the regents, will you accept the position? With pleasure. Good. We'll set up an informal reception for next week here in my house. We'll ask the regents, whatever trustees are in town, and uh, the senior faculty members. Fine. I'm sorry, Mrs. Rogers, your doctor was right. There's no possibility of your ever having a child. Here, drink this. Make you feel better. been a reception. I, uh, I'm late already. Good day, Mrs. Rogers. Goodbye. Thank you.
What's the matter? Why, I... What happened? He, he, he swung out. The other car, the truck. The other I, car, I see... yeah. Crazy women driving all over the highway. No, I... I bet you're drunk, that's what. Please, please don't move him. Oh. He might have a back injury. Get away. Wait a minute. Please be careful of him. Please. You'll get out of the way. Let me get in next, and then I can Just see get him. out of the way. What are you taking him? Please, which hospital? Wait for me, and I'll follow you in my car. Jane. Yes, good evening. Paula, we've been looking for you, darling. Good evening. There's a certain rumor running about. Congratulations, Paula. Yes, that's simply Thank awful. You, Paula. Oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Paula, where have you been? We've missed you at the club. Well, I, I'm already sorry, but you see, have I have to start coming again. Yes, I will. I'll do that. I certainly will. Paula Rogers heard the news. Hello, Mary. You know, John and I have wanted so much to get together with you and John. It and it's a shame that in all these years we haven't had a chance to have an evening together, just the four of us. Now I'm going to call you tomorrow. First thing. Yes. And we'll arrange that you don't forget. I won't. Hello, Mrs. Rogers. Rogers. Good evening. Hello, John. Hello, Johnny. It's beautiful. Thank you. May I present Mrs. Rogers? Oh. Mrs. Laszlo? How do you do? Dr. Laszlo. How do you do, Dr. Mrs. Brown. How do you Pleasure. do? John, may I see you for a moment, oh, please? Hello, sure. Mrs. Rogers. Uh, President Russell, good evening. I wonder if I might borrow your husband for a few minutes. There are some people I'd like him to meet. Will you excuse me, darling? I'll be right back. Hello, oh, Paula. Oh. You look as though you could use one of these. Thank you, Doctor. Good evening. Cliff, do you know where the telephone is? In the hall. There's so many people there. Is there another one in the house? Upstairs, in the bedroom. Oh, thanks. Excuse me. Hello. There was an accident on the highway tonight. A little boy was hit. One moment, please. Emergency receiving. A little boy was hit tonight on the highway. Can you tell me, was he brought in there? Just a minute. You mean the drunk hit and run case? Hello, who is this? Who is this? Who is speaking? Thank you very much. Good night. 
There's something I must oh, talk to you about. On the Hello, way... Carl. How about lunch this week, John? Let's get together. Great idea. I'll call you. All right, Carl. Uh, Give my best to your wife. Thank you. You know, you can go along for years, certain you know about people. Yes. Then your position changes. You get promoted, and suddenly they switch on you. John. Hey! That guy, Carl Swenson, he's been sniping at me in my work for years. Yes, I know. Now the word I... is out that I'm getting the appointment, and we're pals. How about lunch this week? Let's get together. I'll call you. John. Did you hear what old Cornwall said to me? No. They'll be watching you, John. They'll be watching. It seems that from here on in, I've got to be exemplary in every way. No loud neckties, no loud opinions, no politics. And above all, not one breath of scandal. Well, I asked for it. Russell says it'll take about four weeks to work everything out. And then the announcement will be official. How's the kid? Possible subdural hematoma. What's that? Hemorrhage. Can we call it critical? Yes. Family been notified? Don't know the kid's name yet. They're trying to get a lead from his clothes. Who's working the case? Lieutenant Dargan. That license number would have been a big help. Well, uh, Lieutenant, you understand the situation. There I was. She gave me a word she's going to follow me. Otherwise, of course, I'd gotten her number. Sure, sure. Huh. You're positive it was a Studebaker. Oh, I didn't say that. I said it looked like a Studebaker. Might have been a Nash, maybe a Ford. I'd have noticed, but all I could think about was that poor kid. Any doubts about the color of the car? A green. I think it was green. You say she'd been drinking. She had a skin full, Lieutenant. A skin full. Excuse me. Oh, Lieutenant, I just thought of something. Her car. On the rear window, there was a sticker. One of them college stickers. Fine, Mr. Bascom, we can use that. Just a moment. The boy's name is David Larson from Hilldale House. It's an orphanage. He wasn't missed until almost 8.30. Anything else? What about the clothes? Well, I don't know. This green stuff on there could be car paint. Yeah, this may be a break. Shoot it to the lab. Right. What kind of a woman would you say she was, Mr. Bascom? Sassy. Very sassy. How was she dressed? Oh, she was all done up. Black silk dress and lots of jewelry. And uh, she had on one of them hats. You know, those society hats? Drunk society woman, huh? Well, I guess you might say that. Oh, yeah, you got me off guard. <laughs> Wait a minute. Frazier's office, please. Dr. Frazier's office? Uh, this is Mrs. Rogers. Is Dr. Frazier in? No, Mrs. Rogers, but he should be back shortly. Can I have him call you? No. No, no, I want to see him. Uh, look, uh, I'm going to come right down there. Would you ask him to wait for me, please? Yes, Mrs. Rogers, I certainly will. Thank you. You got a problem? Well, yes, sort of. Cliff, I, uh, I've been feeling rather useless, and... I think I'd like to do some kind of work to take up my time. Something something useful, you know. Hospital work? Yes, perhaps. How I... much time can you devote? Well, I don't know. I hadn't put that much thought into it, really. Uh, Cliff, they say that uh, they brought him here to your hospital. I didn't know you could read upside down. <laughs> no. I read about it at breakfast. Oh. You could work with the Red Cross. I think you'd find it interesting and rewarding. Uh, Cliff, are you connected with the case? Yes, I received the reports. Would you like to try the Red Cross? Well, I don't know exactly. I'm not sure, but the papers say that his condition is 
critical. It's hard to tell. Is he going to die? Paula, as your friend and physician, I prescribe that you keep your mind and sympathies fixed on the brighter side of life. Hmm? Please, Cliff. I really want to know what's happened to him. We had to operate. There was pressure on the brain. He came through it all right, but at this stage it's hard to tell. He may be over it in a few days. He may never recover. I know, you could work with the Grey Ladies. They help the nurses, cheer the patients, spread sunshine. I think you'd like it. I can make the arrangements. When do you like to start? Tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow will be fine. Fine. And, uh, Paula, keep in touch with me. Promise? Uh, of course, Cliff. Drop in any time if you like it. All right. And thanks again. Bye-bye. Bye, Cliff. Back. Are you free, Doctor? All right. I just stopped in to say goodbye, Doctor. I guess you're seeing these. Yes. Well, if there's anything else I can do... You've been very helpful, Mr. Bascom. I'll, I'll, I'll keep in touch. Well, good. You know, car paint is almost like a fingerprint, Lieutenant. No two manufacturers ever use exactly the same mixture. There's always some variance in the chemical content in the shading. Now, I've already checked some of this paint from the buckle with the sample in the catalog. I want to show you something. Take a chip of this paint, put it on the sample. I'd like to have you take a look at that. Looks like they match to me. No doubt about it. What do we start looking for? Green Ford, 1951. So long. See you later. You bet. Getting the hang of things? Well, I still get lost. This place is so big. <laughs> uh, tell me something, will you? What? If someone had a brain operation, where would they put them? It depends on the case. Is it a man or a woman? A child. Very likely in the children's section. Twelfth floor, west wing. Uh, this elevator? Thanks. Oh, thank you. Twelve, please. Fourth floor. Going up. Oh, Paula, everything all right? Yes, Dr. Fine. Eleventh floor. Dropping Harvey from the faculty. It's a terrible thing. His brother is mixed up in a scandal in the East, and just because a few cranks wrote some letters to the regents, the man loses his position in the department. Corner won't fight for him. I just don't understand it. What's wrong, dear? Nothing. Why don't you get some sleep? I, I, I'm not tired, John. Can I warm you up some milk? And tell you the truth, I just hate warm milk. Paula, you've been very tense these last few days. Please, Don't John. You? I'm all right. Good night, darling. Good night, John.
Here comes the toy car. I'm glad you're helping, Paula. It takes two to handle these Indians. I'll bet. Come on, children. Come on. Come on. Come on. You're new here, aren't you? Yes, I am. See anything on that cart you'd like, then? Just a minute, children, just a minute. First, I want you to meet Mrs. Rogers. How do you do? What should we do today? Cut out dolls. Out of what? Cut out dolls. Just a minute. Two cut outs, please. You better be cut outs. Cut outs. You all know how to use scissors. Sure. There's one for you. Here, you take one for you. You like that one? You take the one here. Paula, yeah. the shy one over there, try to get him to join oh, me in. Sure. I'll give you your sister. Excuse me. What are we here? Hello. Aren't you going to come play with the other little boys and girls? We have some very nice cutout books. We're going to have lots of fun. Davy was awful sick. He wasn't even able to get out of bed until this morning. But you're up now, Davy. Isn't that nice? So why don't you come and play with us? Oh, come on, don't be shy. He's not shy. He can't talk. He's been hit by a car and he's lost his speech. He can't talk at all. Not at all. He's lost the power of speech. I wasn't sure till we ran all these tests on him. When the car hit him, there was concussion in the area of the brain that controls speech and writing. The condition's known as motor aphasia. But he seems to know what's going on. He reacts, he, he understands what the other children are saying. Yes, he does. That's the trouble. The boy can think. He wants to express his thoughts. But the memory of how to express them is gone. <laughs> A scientist friend of mine once sat down to list all the possible combinations of movements of lips, tongue, larynx, breath that we use in normal everyday speech. <laughs> when he got to 1100, he quit. Now, the Larson boy doesn't even know one combination. He can't even clear his throat. He's like a newborn baby. Will he always be that way? Well, he needs a teacher. What can a teacher do? Free educate him. Teach him to speak again. The process isn't complicated, but it takes time. Time and patience and more time. Months and months, sometimes years. That's the trouble. No teacher. There's no one on my staff who can spare the time. It's a shame, too. Paula, last week you said you felt restless, that you wanted to do something useful. How'd you like to do something really useful? You could do this job. I'd show you how. You mean... I, I could teach him to speak again? It would mean taking him into your house. He'd have to live there. And it would mean endless hours of hard, nerve-wracking work. But he's a nice boy, Paula. He, he needs love and comfort and help. John wants to adopt a child. Uh, let me talk it over with him, will you, Cliff? Sure. I think we finished for today, gentlemen. I think we've covered everything. Well, good day, John. Good afternoon. Charles, will you take this report? I would like to read that. Oh, how do you do? Oh, right. oh. Darling. You know my wife, Charles? Oh, yes, Mrs. Rogers. I'm very glad to see you. Thank you. It's <laughs> nice to see you again, Professor. What are you doing here? Giving the boys a thrill? John, I found a child. What? Well, you still want to adopt a child, don't you? Well, yes. Well, I found one, a little boy. Fine. Seven years old. Wonderful. There's only one thing. What's that? He can't talk. Can't talk? What do you mean, he can't talk? 
The lawyer's motor aphasia. Do you know what that is? Mm-hmm. I checked with Dr. Dahlberg on the way over here. He's not as optimistic as you. Well, I think I know more about this particular case. Cliff, I'm as open to new ideas as the next one. You know how much I want a child. But why does it have to be a freak? He's not a freak, John. I know, I know, that was foolish. I'm dean of a college and I talk to the students about charity, tolerance, emotional maturity. But when it comes down to personal application, Cliff, I'm just another man who wants to raise a son he can brag about. Did you tell all this to Paula? I started to, but I couldn't finish. Why? She started to cry. Paul has been pretty tense lately. You were right about her reaction to losing the baby. Yes, now make another little prophecy. What is it? Unless Paula can find something to lose herself in, she's going to get worse. You may find yourself dealing with a psychoneurotic. Look, Cliff, I don't want to adopt the boy. That's definite. But if it will help Paula... Could I bring the boy into my home with the understanding that the orphanage will find him a permanent home later? Oh, I think that could be arranged. All right. When does he come? About 10 days. I think you're doing a wonderful thing, Mrs. Rogers. To tell you the truth, we were quite worried about Davy's case. The orphanage just doesn't have the money this therapy would cost. Oh, Davy doesn't mind if we talk about him, do you? You don't know how lucky you are to be moving into a nice home like this, Davy. It isn't every little boy who gets a chance to be with nice people like Mr. and Mrs. Rogers. Miss Smith, there it is. That's our house over there. Oh. Uh, good night, Miss Smith, and thanks for driving us home. Good night. Come and see us sometime. Oh, I will. Good night, Davy. Oh, dear. John. This is David. Hello, David. Don't you want to shake hands? Yeah. Oh, Cora. Davy, this is Cora. Bless his little heart. He's so skinny. We're going to have to fatten you up, Davy. I have supper for both of you. Oh, I'm sorry, Cora. I should have called you. We've already had supper. Oh. Tonight's your church night, isn't it? But I don't mind giving it up. Oh, no, no. You go right ahead. John and I can put David to bed. All right. <laughs> oh, thank you, dear. Come on, David. See you in the morning, baby. You come down early, and I'll show you how we make waffles. <laughs> Good night, Cora. Good night. John, I have everything all arranged with the school. School? Mm -hmm. David starts Monday. How can he go to school? Well, he picks right up where he left off. He's in the second grade, aren't you, David? Here we are. This is your room, David. Do you like it? Hmm? Let me take your jacket. I'm going to put it right over here in the closet. This is where we're going to keep all your things, right in here. And this bureau, that belongs to you, too. We're going to keep your pajamas and your underwear and, oh, everything like that in there. Well, it's uh, getting pretty late, David, so... After you put away a few of your things, then you can take a nice warm bath and get into bed, all right? Uh, put these in the bottom drawer, will you? I remember when I was a little girl, I used to love to take baths. Little boys always say they hate them, but I don't believe that. Oh, they can have too much fun splashing around in the water and playing with boats and things. Now, this is where we keep your toothbrush. to remember what I told you. You mustn't think of us as uh, grown-ups. We're going to boss you around, you see? Just three people living in the same house. Three friends. We're going to be very good friends, David. And we're going to have lots of fun. Of course, the most fun we'll have is after you've learned to talk again. Then you and I can talk together about, oh, so many things. Give me the other one. We're going to work very hard on talking, David, you and I, and on reading and writing. 
In the meantime, though, if there's anything that you want or need, you just make signs, will you? And I'll try to understand. All right? Down we go. There. Uh, John? Yeah? I have a job for you. Uh, John, give David his bath, will you, while I put away the rest of his things? Well, how do I do it? I've never bathed the child. Oh, it's just like washing a car. Paula, this wasn't in the agreement. Oh, now, John, don't be a sourpuss. Go on, give the boy a bath. All right, son. Let's go. yourself wet. No, I mean all over. Hey! hey what Not your hair. What do you want to do, catch cold? Paul, he got his hair wet. Oh? Maybe while I'm at it, I ought to give him a shampoo. Well, that's up to you, dear. How about it? Do you want a shampoo? Well, maybe we'll give you one anyway. I don't know. Let's get some soap on you. Hey! He's ticklish. Are you going to bathe that boy? You're going to play games, huh? Bathe him, of course. <laughs> Come on, Davey. Let's see you swim. Not bad, not bad at all. Oh, that was great. Over here, Cliff? Yes, that's right. Over by the table. Are we going to begin right now? Yes. Paula, will you sit here? First exercise will be very short. Davy. This is going to be pretty hard work. But you must remember, this is how you're going to learn to speak again. Now, both of you look at each other uh, in, in the mirror. You better get used to it, because that's the way you're going to be looking at each other from now on. Maybe you better move you a little closer. John, have you got a phone book? Here. Now, there are all sorts of words in here, and we're going to move them over into here, one by one. Watch each other. Davy's going to learn by watching you, Paula. His mouth's forgotten what to do, but when he sees you do it, he'll copy you, and we'll see what comes out. Need anything else, Cliff? No. I've got a nine o'clock conference. Oh. Bye, Donnie. Bye, dear. See you later, Cliff. Bye, John. Good luck, Davy. This is the first recording of the voice of David Larson. Now, we'll begin with the simplest sounds. First, the vowels. We'll start with O. Make the sound slowly and carefully, Paula. And, Davy, you watch Paula's lips as you've never watched anything before in your life. All right. O. O. That's it. See how her lips make a circle, Davy? See how round it is? Show him, Paula, with your finger. O. Get the idea, Davy? All right? Try it. Oh. Davy? Oh. You can try it sometime, Davy. Oh. It's very good. It's the first sound Davy's made since the accident. Feels pretty good to be making noises again, huh? Now, now, now let's try it again. And not so large this time. Smaller circle. Uh, That's it. You got it. <laughs> Sometime we'll play that recording again. And then you'll be able to tell us just how hard it was to make that first sound. Now, here's the letter O. And I want you to trace it with your finger like that. 
Because you've got to learn what it looks like, just as you've got to learn what it sounds like. See? All right, Paula. That's the procedure. And I think you're doing fine. Both of you. Now try it by yourselves. You ready? Oh, that's good. Oh, that's very good. Once more. Oh, that's wonderful. Baby, would you like a cookie? Here, dear, let me wipe your face for you. David, let me tell you something. They just didn't know, honey. They don't know that you can't talk. And they... Oh, David. Don't worry, darling. You will one of these days. I promise you. We're going to work so hard on it that... David, do you hear that? You want some ice cream? Huh? Okay, let's get it. Ice cream. Good, isn't it? You, you like chocolate better? I'll swap you. Yes? I'm Lieutenant Dargan, Doctor. I'm working on the David Larson case. The hit-and-run case. Oh, yes. Last time I tried to see the boy, he was still in a critical condition. I wonder if it's possible for me to see him now, talk to him. I need some information. Well, I'm afraid it's a little difficult. He's left the hospital. Oh? Has he gone back to the orphanage? No. No, he's gone to live at the home of Mr. and Mrs. John Rogers. Rogers. Mrs. Rogers. Is that Paula Rogers? Yes. Do they live out near the university? Yes, I think they do. He drives a green Ford, 1951. Will you have a cigarette? You know, doctors and policemen have quite a bit in common, don't they? Now and then. 
Have you got a moment? I'd like to talk to you. Sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Seven. You are seven years old. Take the chalk in your hand and trace that seven for me. And trace it very well now. Seven. Well, let me help you with the next one now. Seven. That's very good. All right, you go and take the seven and put it up with the others. Good. That's fine. Now, David, come over here. We're going to start with a brand new sound today. It's the sound of the letter P. You see that? Now, I want you to trace it for me once. That's P. Now, it's the sound of... It's like, uh, well, it's like air popping out of your mouth. See? Now, come on, try it with me. Buh. No, dear, you're using your voice, and I don't want to hear that. I want to hear just the sound of the air popping out. Now, again. Buh. No, darling, not your voice, just the... Oh, yes, yes, of course. Now, watch, David. I'm going to blow this match out by making the sound of... Buh. See? Now, I want you to try that for me. All right, now. Go on. Blow it out. Well, no, that isn't exactly what I meant. Look, I'll show you once more. Now, watch very carefully. Now, all right? All right, now, come on. Try hard. Good. That's very good. Now, try it for me once without the match. Good. Now, once more. Good. Now, that's the sound of P, as in uh, puppy. Puppy. Uh, wait a minute. Look, David. This is a puppy. See? Feel him. Feel how nice and soft he is. See? The puppy. The puppy is your friend. Good. All right, now take that letter P and put it up with the others. See if you can do the O by yourself. Keep in the lines. Good. Now say it for me. Hello. Hello. Fine. Fine. <laughs> Very fine. Mrs. Rogers. Yes? There's a detective downstairs from the police. He wants to see you. Did he say what he wanted? No. Well, tell him I'll be right down. You go ahead and finish tracing that until I get back. Cora, never mind, I'll get it. Okay. Yes? Mrs. Rogers? Yes? I'm Lieutenant Dargan from headquarters, Mrs. Rogers. Oh, yes, Lieutenant. Did you ever oh. employ a gardener named Ferris? Yes, yes, I did. Why? We're checking on him. Nothing serious, but I wonder if you'd mind answering a few questions. Not at all. Uh, come in. Thank you. Lovely house, Mrs. Rogers. Thank you. Sit down. You. Your husband's at the university, isn't he? He's the dean of the English department. You look very young to be married to a dean. I always think of deans as having beards and white hair. <laughs> what was it you wanted to know about Ferris? Oh, Ferris. Why did he leave your service? Well, it, it was several years ago. I, I, I... Well, he, he just left. I don't think there was any particular reason. Was he honest? Oh, yes. Matter of fact, he was overly honest. I remember he used to save everything. The strings, cuttings, seeds, everything. I can't imagine what you'd want with him. I hope he's not in any serious trouble. No, no. Just a routine check. Well, I'm glad to... Oh, <laughs> David, come down. David, this is Lieutenant Darkin. This is David, Lieutenant. Hello, David. Would you like to try? Hey. 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 David. Hey. 
Hello. <laughs> David's been having some trouble with talking, but now he's learning to speak again. Oh, is that so? <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mrs. Uh, Rogers. You're welcome, Lieutenant. I've got the information I need. So long, Davey. See you again sometime. Bye-bye. Very good. Come on, let's get back to work. She hasn't even fixed up the paint on the fender. The case is a wrap-up. Are you going to arrest her? There's no hurry. No hurry at all. Now, F-R-I-E-N-D spells friend. Friend, see? John, you better hurry. All right, I'll be right there. Now, look. Now, let's take you. Let's copy your name. D A V I another D David <laughs> Good we'll have you signing checks in no time Checks Well checks are <laughs> checks I'll explain it to you another time you go ahead and copy your name Darling, is he in? No. I left him copying his name on the blackboard. Oh. David, get into bed. I'll be there in a minute. Completed the adoption papers today. Oh. Bonnie Hendrickson knows somebody down at City Hall who expedite them. Oh, that's wonderful. When I think of how I fought the idea, how close I came to missing. Uh, but you didn't. <laughs> He's a wonderful boy. Yes. Oh, darling, that doesn't look very nice. Do that again. All set there? Good night, David. God bless you and keep you safe. What's the matter? Come on, Paula. We're late. Good night, son. Aren't you going to kiss him good night? Good night, son. <laughs> You're choking me. <laughs> Got a hug like a bear. <laughs> Could write well, too. See you at breakfast, son. Don't forget your prayers. happened to Davy since yesterday afternoon. What do you mean? Well, I can't understand it. You know, for weeks he's taken an active interest in group activities, yes. and they've accepted him as they would anyone else. But today he's been sulky, disinterested. It's not like him, Mrs. Rogers. Has he tried to speak at all today? Not a peep. Yes. 
Well, don't worry, Miss Turner. I'm sure you'll be all right. I hope so. And thanks, Miss Turner. You do understand what I've been telling you, don't you? It was an accident, dear. I didn't hurt you on purpose. I certainly didn't mean to. And when I found out how badly you were hurt, I wanted to do everything I could to help you. You know, when you first came to our house, when we first started working together, it was only because I wanted to help a little boy that I'd hurt. But in the meantime, David, I grew to love you. And you don't believe me, do you? You don't believe one word I've said, do you? Good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. How do you do, Sonny? How old are you? He, uh, he's seven. Fine-looking little lad, isn't he? Thank you. David, why didn't you answer the gentleman? You know how old you are, and you can say it. Is it because you've forgotten? Or have you decided to stop trying? Is it because you hate me? You do hate me, don't you? You hate me worse than anything else in the world, don't you? You hate me so much that you wish a policeman would come and take me away and put me in jail and punish me for what I did to you, don't you? You wish that everyone in the world could know how bad I am, don't you? <sighs> they never will know, David. They never will. Because you're the only one who can tell them. And you can't speak. Isn't that a shame? Of course, if you... Go on with your lessons. If you let me go on teaching you to speak, then you could tell them. Then you could tell everybody. Everybody, David, just what I did to you. You agree? No, sir, not in a million years. Davy, this is Mr. Bascom. <laughs> you don't have to introduce Davy and me, does she, Davy? Hey, boy? <laughs> of course, you've forgotten, but you and I, we've met before. Under other circumstances. Mr. Bascom was the man who took you to the hospital when you were hurt by that car. Oh, uh, I'm happy. That's all I gotta say. Happy. I just want to see this poor little shaver back in his pins. Did you say the lady wouldn't be back till five? That's right. And she'd be terribly upset to know that she's missed you. Oh, well. Uh, you tell her that when they told me over that hospital about what she was doing, I just had to come over and meet her. Uh, tell her that I'll stop by the next time I get to town. I... I just want to shake her hand. I want to thank her in my own way for... well, for what she's doing for this poor little shaver. I'll tell her. <laughs> well, goodbye, Davy. Bye. Cora, that is never to happen again. I don't see what you're so head up about. The man drove 50 miles just to see the boy and to thank you. I don't care. And if he comes back, you're to keep him outside the front door. Do you understand? Sorry, Cora. I don't mean to lose my temper this way. But it's most important that Davy is not reminded of the accident in any way. I'm 
minutes. I'll be with you in a minute, Davy. Wait a minute. Doctor Fraser takes sugar. excited about, hmm? Me, me. Yes, that's that's you, isn't it? Me. Do you remember all about the accident? Me, yes. <laughs> but you're feeling fine now. In a few months, you'll be just as well as you were before it happened, won't you? No, no. Yes. Do you take sugar? Uh, yes, thank you. Cora was right, then. Would you care for a cookie, David? Is this the latest recording? Yes. Right, I get to work, then. This is the 11th weekly recording of the voice of David Larson. My name... My Here you are, name... Thank you. I could enter this guy into freshman class next fall, and by the end of the semester, he'd be in the top quarter. Darling, I wish you didn't have to go to that freshman <laughs> smoker tonight. I hate to, but it's a dean's life. You've got a spot here right on your sleeve. Let me get you another jacket. I won't be a minute. <laughs> what? talk? Sure she did, Davy. Paula taught you how to talk, didn't she? Sure, she did. Now off to bed you go. I won't be very long, dear. All right. I'm tempted not to go at all. <laughs> Good night. Night, Sleep well, boy, do you hear? John. Good dear. Miss Rogers? Yes? My name's Bascom, ma'am. Your housekeeper told me that you were usually home evenings, so I'd drop by just to tell you what a fine thing I think it is you're doing for that boy. Uh, you see, in a way, you and I are in the same boat. I mean, uh, I'd done my bit when he was laying out there in the road, and you... You! you. You're the one. You're the one that was drunk out there in the road. You're the one that ran the boy down. Yeah. Taking in that poor little kid to save your skin, huh? No. Using him to hide your crime. No, I... Well, it won't do you no good. No good at all. Because I'm turning you in, Mr. lady. Mr. Glaskin, please let me explain something to you. You don't understand. Don't understand. I understand plenty. No, you don't. It's the boy. 
we're separated now, the whole thing will collapse. Oh, that's the matter. You afraid of jail? Oh, no, no, it isn't that. Honestly, it isn't. I just must have more time. His training isn't finished Save yet. your no. breath. I ain't listening. Oh, please, look. He needs more training. Talk, talk, talk. Very pretty talk, but it don't mean nothing to me. Where's the phone? Mr. Baskin, please. Just a few more days. That's all he days. needs. Days. I'm not giving more you days. minutes, lady. But uh, don't you... Oh, never mind the phone. Come on, son. I'm taking you out of here. Taking you away from this Leave crazy... Leave him alone. Woman. You have no right to come into my house this week. Listen. Get out. I'm taking that boy where he belongs. To the police. That's no. where. Yes, the police. They'll take care of him. They'll keep him safe from crazy drunk women. Don't but... touch him. Don't touch him. Get out of the Don't way. Don't touch him. Don't Come on, touch... kid. For your own good. Don't... Get out of my house! should have told me. Oh, darling, you don't know how much I wanted to. It just never seemed to be the right time. First it was your appointment as dean, and, and then your whole career. John, I was just afraid you'd lose everything. That's I wouldn't I have cared. I don't care. No position, no, no appointment on earth is worth what you've gone through. It's going to be all right, Paula. Oh. Oh, thank God. It's all right, dear. It's all right, dear. I guess you know what happens now. This farmer Bascom preferred charges. I'll have to take you to the station. You'll be booked. They'll release you on bail. Tomorrow morning, we'll go see the DA. We'll tell him the story, everything. I don't think he'll prosecute. Too many counts in your favor. It'll be over in a little while, over and forgotten. The important thing is we've got Davy. We can keep him. What? No. No, we can't keep David. Oh, what do you mean? The adoption papers are in. We've only a few months to wait. What are you talking about, Paula? David knows Cliff. He knows I'm the one who ran over him. You mean he recognized you? He saw you? He, he saw me. He Dar knows. Darling, I just don't... John, the only thing he wants right now is to be able to tell and to see me punished. And that's why we can't keep him. We can't force that child to continue to live with someone he hates. Darling, I just don't believe Davy feels that way. This puts a new slant on the case. Dargan. Davy, feeling better, huh? Davy, I understand you know who ran over you. Is that right? Davy, you remember this man? He's a policeman. He can arrest her. He can have her punished, put in jail if that's what you want. All you have to do is to tell him that she's the one.